and welcome to Beautiful Minds. Uh, today we have a new friend, Ritu, joining us. Uh, welcome to our show, Ritu. Hope you're doing good. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Adeline, for having me here. So, Ritu, uh, could you go ahead and talk something about yourself because we would like to know more about you? Sure. Thank you. So, I have been an image consultant and soft skills facilitator since 2015. And I work extensively with individual clients who come from various backgrounds, such as CXOs, um, homemakers, young girls of marriageable age, also a lot of business owners. And I conduct a lot of corporate trainings for uh, women in uh, leadership development. And also I train a lot of retail staff. So that's been my journey so far. That's a wonderful journey. So how, how important do you think is creating an image these days since uh, you are an image consultant, I would like to know. Absolutely. So what has happened, Adeline, these days is that there is so much competition. There are so many people with the same qualifications, with the same degrees, and you know the market is flooded. Now, how do I really create a presence for myself? How do I really stand out in the crowd? That's what image management really helps you do. It helps you create a presence. It helps you create visibility through your self-presentation skills. So 10 people out of which all 10 having the same capabilities. But if I am able to bring out what's inside on my external visibly, automatically I help to create a, you know, a more better success rate for myself. So is this the uh, only for working professionals or is it also for individuals? It works for anybody and everybody. Because even if you go to the grocery store, even if you are at home, you know, homemakers are dealing with their home staff, house staff, house help every day. They're dealing with their children every day. Any time, any given point in time, you are visible to certain people. So it's applicable to anybody who is facing certain challenges, which could range from, you know, Meri baat koi nahi sunta or mujhe respect nahi milti hai. Yeah. All of these. The reason behind is that as per science, the human brain is photographic. Jo dikta hai, us pe hi zyada vishwas hota hai. So if I look a certain way and then my words are, you know, in parallel with that, automatically I'm able to overcome my challenges. So it works for anybody and everybody. That's really nice. So some people, uh, you know, when it comes to body language or something like that, some people just can't dress up well. So what is the solution for them? So how important is dressing uh, for an individual? So absolutely all of us are not born with the natural ability to dress really well and you know bring clothes together and style it so that's where all that i train people on is actually it's like any other skill set so we help you understand who you are as a personality we help you understand your body shape your coloring and we guide you on how you can actually present yourself and this needs to be practiced like any other skill and you automatically become one of those who are actually born with that natural talent. So it's a skill set that's easily learnable if you would like to. If, you, if you're interested in Absolutely. Okay. So do you think uh, shopping habits can be changed? So this is, uh, this is something that, you know, most of my clients will say that I have such a big wardrobe. I have so many clothes, but I still have nothing to wear. So why is that really happening is because we go into malls, we go and buy things that, you know, we see on somebody else and we look at the trends and we just go and purchase it. But in hindsight, we don't really look at what our lifestyle is, what our needs really are. At the same time, what is my personality? Does that particular style of garment work for me as an individual? Does it work for my body shape? Does it work for my coloring? All of these elements, once I look into, automatically I will start being very selective of what I actually buy. And obviously I will make it a habit and change my purchasing ways. And obviously save on a lot of money as well. Mm -hmm, that's true. 
So uh, how valuable is retail training for a small business uh, owners? So in the world of online shopping today, customers crave that customer experience. When they go into a store, uh, actually researchers have mentioned that, you know, uh, online shopping is something that is probably not going to be the most long lasting thing. But because people are missing out that experience of going to the store, touching, feeling things and, you know, then purchasing it. So what is happening is that thousands of stores in the market, everybody carrying similar products in the similar price range. So how can a retail store actually stand out is that every customer wants to feel special. They want to be treated better. So when the staff actually takes that extra effort of bringing an experience rather than just product for my customer, automatically sales go up. And that comes through training your staff on what is customer experience and how you can get better at that. So for smaller business owners today, smaller retail stores, this customer experience of Helping your employees understand what that is because has become kind of imperative because this entire staff in a retail store generally doesn't come with any learning, any background, any you know study. They just learn everything on the job. So it could be right, it could be incorrect. Some people could have picked up, some people couldn't have picked up. Yes. So when a training is done, there's a standardization that is maintained and that helps to bring in more customers and also retain a lot of customers so that's where it's become highly important for business owners to bring in that retail training for their staff so Ritu, is this training given to an individual or uh, in groups how exactly do you guys train them it works on both modules completely dependent on your uh, requirement so when comes to an individual we also have customized trainings and at the same time when we're looking at a corporate company or we're looking at a, a retail store we do group trainings for them okay. All right. so uh, how can you see uh, how can we see like more women uh, at leadership roles interesting question actually so, and a question that is that is very close to my heart is because what i have seen in most corporate companies is that the women are absolutely at par when it comes to the performance with the men the only challenge that they are facing is creating that impression of a leader creating that presence and that little uh, you know push from the inside that you know i can do it women tend to hold themselves back so this absolutely can be a game changer in terms of self-presentation if they work on that they can definitely move forward and up the leadership they very well explained the difference between you know there's no difference actually there's no difference between a woman and a man in these days because everybody is equal and everybody works really hard so i would also like to know like you know uh, some common mistakes in body language that people tend to do Absolutely. So what is happening uh, with us on a day-to-day -day basis is that if we are feeling low, we are feeling dull, automatically what happens is certain hormones, the stress hormones called the cortisol get activated in our body. And that is directly connected to our exterior body language. And our body language starts showing that dullness and feeling low. But the challenge that is that most of us don't realize that if we actually change our body language, be conscious of these internal hormones being dipped and change your body language into a more powerful, more confident one, you'll actually see your spirits going up. You'll actually see a change in the hormones. And that is actually scientifically proven. So the next time that you feel that you are feeling dipped or you're feeling a little low, be conscious change your body language and you'll see how everything else changes. Your mood gets uplifted, you get more productive and things like that. So body language is actually a very powerful tool that we have at our disposal, which can be used at any time. That's really well answered.
So how, how do you identify potential leaders in an organization with, when, when you train them and all? So anybody who's, I feel, in my opinion, who is more proactive, who is displaying that, you know, uh, working as a team, somebody who's not too aloof, in my opinion, is somebody who is a potential leader. Because most often, um, somebody who takes initiative is able to drive everybody together. But somebody who is commanding and demanding during my trainings is, is a big red flag that, you know, probably this person is not the right fit for a leader. So anybody who's driving other people, pushing and motivating is the one who I feel is a potential leader. Yeah, motivation is must. Absolutely. Be very much needed. <laughs> so one last question for you, uh, like any tips uh, to manage stress that you would like to share at, at, especially at the workplace? Um, I think uh, some very, very important things that I follow and I have also you know, shared with my trainees and they've come back with the feedback is that making a to-do list and prioritizing. These two things really help in terms of uh, you know, uh, your stress management and a technique called the Pomodoro technique wherein we do 25 minutes of deep work no distractions in those 25 minutes and take a five minute break and again start the cycle of 25 minutes this is something where you know you end up doing a lot of work in lesser time and automatically then all the stress gets managed and the second thing for especially women that uh, i have seen and i recommend is that manage your guilt first the minute we start managing that guilt and overcoming that Oh my God, I have left my child at home. Oh my God, I didn't do this. Oh my God, I didn't do that. Um, we reduce our stress levels. So these two things really work in my opinion. Those are very good points what has been covered. So Ritu, as you, you have been taking so many sessions for so many clients and you know, for students and all. So I would like to know like the best testimony that you would like to share of one of your clients or one of your students. That would be great. So, um, actually, this happened a few weeks ago. I started consulting a finance professional and she's been in the industry for over 15 years. And um, she has been dealing with a lot of uh, self-image issues right from her childhood. So, since childhood, there has been certain conditioning that you are not as good as your siblings, you are not as tall, you're short, you're stout all of those things and over a period of time that just kept building up on her and it completely shattered her self-confidence so much so her husband started observing this and that's where uh, they reached out to me and we started doing some self-image sessions with them and uh, after about two sessions on self-image she reached out to me and she said, you know, uh, Ritu, I used to never even speak up with my manager. I used to just simply say, okay, yes, I'll do this. Okay, yes, I'll do that. And I used to not even take the smallest decision of, you know, what should I make for lunch or dinner at home without consulting my husband. And I started taking these smaller decisions based on the discussions we had on self-image and the exercises you gave me. And she's saying that, my manager has been complimenting me and my husband has been noticing these changes in me. So even before we reach the level of working on her appearance, these few things of where she started changing what she speaks to herself and believing about herself automatically has brought about the change that we were looking for. So I think that little thing of where uh, she got pushed to speak up, she got pushed to even, you know, take small decisions at home, became a huge, huge testimony for me. So I think that these are little things that really keep pushing me through my work. That's really very nice, Ritu. So friends, anybody has any problems, so Ritu is always available for you. You can follow her on LinkedIn, Instagram and on uh, Facebook as well. So any problem, so please consult her. She would be there to help you. And thank you so much, Ritu, for coming on our show. We do need people like you who help us. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful uh, future ahead. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here. Same here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.